I've been 3D printing for quite some time now, and back in the dark ages of 3D printing slices, you had to create a printer profile from scratch that worked well on your 3D printer. Nowadays though, it's a little bit easier. Just go into the wizard, select your printer from the drop down menu, and then bam, you have a range of settings you can use on your printer that for the most part work really well. However, is a default profile the best profile? Well, I don't think so. And I often find myself changing the same settings again and again to get the best prints possible off my machines. So I thought I'd make a video sharing my top five settings that I change from default settings in my slicer to get the best prints possible. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse and welcome back to another 3D Printing 101. Now here I have Prusa Slicer, but the settings I'm going to talk about are pretty transferable into any other slicer, but I am comfortable using this, this software. It's free, easy to get, there'll be a link in the description below, and this at time of filming is version 2.4.2, but yeah, it's pretty transferable between any other slicer you might be comfortable with. So how do you get settings for your printer to start with? Well, as I said, it's really easy these days. You don't have to build a profile from scratch anymore. You can just go to configuration, configuration wizard, and Prusa Slicer now has tons of different printer profiles built into the wizard beyond their own brand of printers, which is really quite cool of them to do. So of course, if you have a Prusa Mark III, you know, you can get the profiles for that. But if you go to other vendors, there's all these different vendors you can choose from. So I have uh, artillery printers, and behind me, I've got a Creality Ender 3. So I'll just select those two. And then I can select which printers I want the profiles for. So Sidewinder X1, and then the Creality Ender 3. Again, there's so many different types of Ender 3s. It's a bit ridiculous. But you can see as there's new Ender 3s coming out, like the Ender 3 S1, people are building profiles for them, and it's marked as alpha because it's quite new, and they might tweak the defaults to make the prints better. But you can still select it here. So I'm going to select Ender 3 because that's the machine I've got, the original. And then you're done. And then you can see under presets, the machine that you've loaded in will pop up. So Creality Ender 3. And then you'll get these print profiles, these print settings. And these are all designed to give you a range of options from really, really high detail prints that take a long time, all the way to super fast draft prints that are pumped out quickly, but might be a bit rough. However, I'm gonna go with the 0.2 millimeter normal setting for my demo in this video. And what I have here is just a simple cube uh, with a corner cut out of it. Nothing too special, just to demonstrate in this video. So let's start by slicing it. And this is off the default 0.2 millimeter normal setting, which is like the setting that most people are going to use. And this print would print fine, but if I go down the layers, there's a lot of things off the bat that I want to change. There's a lot of things going on here that it'll print, but will it print quickly and efficiently and look good and be strong? Not in my book. So the first thing I tend to change is perimeters. So this setting always seems to be universally set to two. Two perimeters around the outside. And you can see that here in the print preview, there's only two perimeters. However, I like to increase this to three. And the reason I increase it to three is for several reasons. One is for strength. I find that three perimeters is a really good balance between print time, print material, and the strength of an object. It adds just that little bit of extra uh, endurance to your final print because you might be aware that the outside surface of an object is where the majority of that object's strength comes from. For example, a pipe is incredibly strong and it's actually pretty much as strong as a solid uh, bar <laughs> because a lot of that strength's from the outside. I studied industrial design, not engineering, so I don't get the terms right, but yeah, the strength comes from the outside, so I increase it to three. Another reason I do it is for quality. So with the infill, this is uh, set at a standard grid infill, which again, we'll talk about. Uh, often I find if you just have two perimeters, that infill can show through to the outside face because as those lines are laid, there's a little bit of intersection between the infill and the outside perimeters, and then they can cause that infill to show on the outside faces, especially with shiny filaments like the polyalchemy style filaments. So adding three perimeters I find makes that much cleaner. And the final reason I go to three instead of two is for overhangs. I find that three perimeters give you just that little bit of extra support for each step over layer with an overhang and I find it gives a better result and you're less likely to have gaps where you can see through into the print and into the infill. But yeah, I change it to three. You might be comfortable with two and that's totally fine, but that's the first thing I change in a default profile. The next up we have the infill and this varies wildly between different presets. 
I've seen it set at way too high a density. I've seen it set at just really weird, like really weird uh, infill types. But in this case, for this one, it's set with this standard grid infill. And this is really old school infill. We've moved well beyond this. And the reason it's not that great is because if you look at the print from the top, in terms of the strength, from the top down, it's very strong, but from the side, it's just gonna crush in on itself like a parallelogram uh, because there's no strength in those directions. It prints quick, fine, but uh, it's not that great. So we have a lot of better, better options for infill. But what infill is best? Well, there is no real best, but I personally prefer cubic. I know a lot of people like gyroid and that's totally fine, um, but I find cubic to be a really good balance between print speed and print strength. So if I slice this print, you can see what cubic is. It's not gonna take longer as such than grid, but because it's a three dimensional infill, it actually gives the part strength from all directions. I find cubic prints really cleanly, the oversteps and stuff, it, it, it tends to not have any sort of uh, issues with overhangs and that. And I find it actually is a very de dependable infill. In terms of printing quicker though, something I do like in the latest Prusa slices is support cubic which is really quite cool. So with support cubic, what it'll actually do is it'll reduce its density adaptively where it's not really needed. So down the bottom of the print, it sort of starts really sparse, which prints quickly, uses less material. And then as it goes up, it increases its density in a really clever way. So it's not gonna, there's not gonna be any parts overhang thin air. It's not gonna droop down or cause issues with overhangs. And as it builds up, it eventually arrives to the top where we end up with pretty much the same as the original settings for cubic to support that top of the print and the solid infill and it's done. So support cubic is really cool, but otherwise I generally just use cubic at around 15 to maybe 20% density for my prints. Next up we have elephant foot compensation and this is because I'm lazy. So a good first layer is critical for your 3D prints to adhere to the print bed. But sometimes you can be a little bit too overzealous and be a little bit too close to the print bed, which will cause the dreaded elephant's foot effect, where the print squishes out and it leaves you with this sort of really thin lip that extends out past the boundaries of the print, which is really annoying if you want dimensionally accurate parts. Now, I do try to keep my prints as level and as perfect as possible, but you know, sometimes I just throw a print on and I don't wanna to have to worry too much. So sometimes my first layers are a little bit too close. To compensate for that, I like to use the elephant's foot compensation in the slicer. So in Prusa Slicer at least, you go down to advanced and then you have uh, elephant's foot compensation down here. And again, this will vary depending on the setting, but I like to increase it usually to 0.3. Uh, usually you see 0.2, uh, here it was 0.1. Sometimes there's no elephant foot compensation at all. But I find in terms of my laziness, that this will give you almost like, if, the, if your first layer is perfect, it'll give you like a tiny little chamfer. But if your first layer is bad, <laughs> then what it will do is just give you that extra bit of uh, clearance for the first layer to avoid that elephant's foot effect. So if I can show you here, it's not even 0.3, isn't that drastic. You can see the first layer to the second, it's, it's a jump, sure, but you look, you're talking about a layer of 0.2 millimeters thickness, so yeah, that just gives you a little, little bit of extra wiggle room to make sure your prints are dimensionally accurate. So that's another thing that I always seem to fi find myself changing. Okay, and now on to number four. And if you take away only one thing from this video, this is the one to take away. This is your seam placement. So what do I mean by seam placement? Well, each layer has the start and finish of a line of molten plastic to form your print. Unless you're printing in vase mode where it's continuous, uh, slowly stepping up in the Z direction, you're gonna have to have a seam. And the seam placement is a setting which determines where it's gonna put it to try to make the print look the best. And what I really like about the Prusa Slicer profile is it lets you see seams really clearly before you commit them to the print. So these little white dots, these are seams. And to show them, you go down to the bottom left here and you can tick seams. And it shows them really clearly. And that doesn't look that great to me. Uh, you can see that on the corners, they kind of spread out all over the place. But it gets even worse when you try to print cylindrical or spherical objects. Let me show you. So here I have a sphere and I'll slice it with the default settings for the seam. And you can see, it looks like it's got a bad case of acne. <laughs> There's all these little tiny little pock marks all over it. And I have done a print recently with this setting 
and it looks the same. So what setting is that? Well, if you go to print settings and you go to layers, you go down here to scene position, it's called nearest. Now what nearest will do is it'll try to hide the seam in a corner or an edge where you're not likely to see it. But on a print that doesn't have many details like a large sphere or that cube we saw before, it looks really bad. <laughs> so what I like to change it to is aligned. And I just personally find aligned seams look the best. Almost in, in almost every circumstance, I find they look the best. So let me show you what it looks like now. There you go. You have the seam completely aligned to one edge. And you could come in with a little Stanley knife and clean that up. Yes, it's visible, absolutely. But you can't make it not visible unless you're, again, you're printing in vase mode. And I just personally find that aligned seams look better. Here's a few prints that I have where I've used aligned seams. And you can see that just the print looks cleaner and that edge looks like it's designed in, like it's almost meant to be there versus this print where it using the uh, the nearest seam, but because it's a cylindrical object with no nearest to align to, they're basically random and they just look awful. So I find that aligned seams are definitely the way to go for ma the majority of prints. And I recommend at least trying them out to see how they affect the quality of your print. Again, it's more like just an aesthetic thing, but if you're printing in the shiny filaments especially, it makes a massive difference to how well they look and how well that shine comes across. Because again, those pock marks, they just don't look that great, do they? Alrighty, we're on to number five, and that setting is ensure vertical thickness. Never heard of it? Well, I don't blame you. It's hidden in the advanced settings for most slices, and most people, if they don't have them like visible, might not even know it exists, but it actually plays a large part in how long your prints take to print, how much material they use, and the final quality of them. So this is that cube again, and I've rotated it and placed it at such an angle that there's some pretty steep overhangs where the plastic might want to droop down or shrink in on itself, and you'd end up with a poor quality print with some print artifacts and inaccuracies. But if I scroll down to show you the layers, You've got this interesting purple stuff going on. Like, what's that all about? Well, if you go down, you can see that what it's doing is trying to sort of hold in those, those uh, perimeters and hold them in place, almost like sort of a scaffold as it builds up to scaffold those layers and those overhangs to keep them dimensionally accurate. It's completely separate to like the perimeters and the infill. It's a separate routine that comes in and then adds this little squiggly line that is designed to hold those, those uh, walls in place. And you can see it builds all the way up to the top. So yes, it can increase print accuracy, but I tend to disable it. And the reason I do that is because I've already increased my perimeters to three. So that already gives my walls a little bit more uh, strength and accuracy in terms of them building up over overhangs, but also it adds material and it adds time, quite substantial time in some cases. And also those little tiny squiggly lines, if they're printed quickly, can vibrate some poorer quality printers and actually cause other inaccuracies and artifacts beyond what it's trying to resolve, which is holding those, those walls in place when they're at a steep angle. So if you go to print settings and then layers and perimeters and you go down to ensure vertical thickness, disable it, come back here to platter and then slice, you can see now that these walls don't have any of that stuff going on at all. <laughs> They're just building up like that, like normal. And to be completely honest, this print will probably be fine. And in some cases that ensure vertical wall thickness setting can add a lot of time to your print. Like in this case, this print isn't that big. It's only 70 millimeters high. It adds a whole extra hour of print time to print this using that setting. So I generally disable it unless I have a print where I know it'll be highly beneficial. I'm happy to take the hit in print time and print material. And well, there you have it. This is what the print looks like before I change those settings. And this is what the print looks like after I've changed those settings. The seam especially really makes a huge difference in my opinion. Like it's just so much cleaner than having it dotted all around the print. And that support cubic here really cuts down a ton of time in printing, but it'll still be more than strong enough for most applications. Again, most of our prints don't have to endure crazy high forces. So this is gonna be more than enough. 
and having those extra three perimeters I find just gives you that little bit of extra quality and reliability when printing. But what I'd love to know in the comments below is what settings you find yourself changing the most when you load up a new profile. Like it might be speed, I haven't even talked about speed or acceleration settings. Do you find that they're often too conservative or do you have to find you have to reduce them even further? Please let me know in the comments below and if you enjoyed this video here on Makers Muse then maybe consider subscribing because it's my aim to empower creativity through technology. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later guys. Bye.